Back from the dead. What's up? Hi, hello. I don't know. Somehow, somehow I'm back. Somebody revived me probably, but we still have a few days or weeks or maybe sessions or technically a few more things to go. So why not? And what we started, you know, end it properly. Okay? So for this one right here, it's the... Uh, the great teacher, I guess, and for this video, we're going to talk about conditional statements. Let's just jump right into it, please. You may not know this, but conditional statements are something that we actually see or hear a lot in different kinds of medium. Like, for example, we hear it or read it in books or maybe read it like subtitles of movies or hear it in films. TV series, whatever it may be, most of the time they're actually used in songs. And some of the best example of the use of conditional statements in songs are as follows. We may have an example wherein I think it's mostly in sad boy or sad girl songs or sad them songs, you know. What I'm saying mostly the word condition because it implies, you know, like a situation where there is something that we start with and something that it will go to like speaking of um one of the best example of this is in the song wherever you will go by the calling you may not know this but this is one of those cool songs to listen to when it's raining and you want to be dramatic even if you're okay even if you don't have a relationship or something or uh, the roots goes as like you know if i could then i would i'll go wherever you will go and there it actually use what we will use and discuss thoroughly in terms of conditional statements the if and the then and in this case probably a more updated version of this sad boy kind of lyricism we can find it with our boy joji in the song run where he says if we share in this sadness then where have you been um i sound like a, po a poet when i'm reading that because i cannot sing even though if i try it's gonna ruin everybody's ears so let's not try with that one so this is one of my favorite songs from Joji. He used here a concept of conditional statements. So as an introduction, so it's much better for you to understand it this way. A conditional statement is a sentence. That's, a word, that's the reason why it says statement. So in this kind of sentence, we have two parts. The first one being the hypothesis and the second one being the conclusion. So in the regular conditional statement, we start with if followed by the hypothesis and then conclusion so in this case with this uh with this song right here uh we share in this sadness is the hypothesis okay this is the hypothesis that we have and then the where have you been is the conclusion so it doesn't make sense in some songs you know like how come is that the conclusion it takes a bit of explaining to do you know, because, you know, lyrics or songs are an artistic way to showcase emotions and the conditions right here. So maybe, you know, Joe is trying to say, if we're truly sharing this sadness, then he's supposed to conclude that this person should be there all the time. But he's looking for this person. So that's the problem there. So maybe that's why, you know, that's the conclusion. That's why joji is looking for this person i don't know if that made sense but that's how a conditional statement works we start with something and then we have an ending uh, one of the possible ways in order for you to understand this better is somewhat relating it to sentences as a whole we have a subject and then we have a predicate or in some cases you might think of cause and effect so the effect of having this thing of sharing sadness is looking for somebody it don't make sense sometimes that's why you may relate it to different kinds of concepts so that it will be easier for you to understand where you can relate it to i hope that made sense now so in this case it is important that you remember what conditional statements are for you know some cases because students are saying oh sir i've heard of that but in a different lesson that's true because conditional statements especially in grade 8 is an introduction to what your logic and reasoning classes will be like in the future especially with senior high courses you're going to see something like logic and reasoning again and there will be truth values in there that will be quite different from the basic or the surface level that we're discussing in grade 8 so it's important to put that out of the way that you're going to see it in the future again but now in this case that we have the basics 
conditional statements are written in the form of if p then q or p implies q this one can also be written in symbols where you can say p wait i uh, i think the arrow will be redundant so p then q so the funny thing here is that i would like to be honest with you i don't know why they use p and q here some students are like sir why didn't they use h and c it's like hypothesis and conclusion why use p for hypothesis um i don't know i have no time to research for that i'm not good in logic and reasoning when i was in college please don't hate me but they use also q for conclusion conclusion maybe oh god that's corny but anyway the point is uh, we use letter b for hypothesis we use q for conclusion so for example we have this um, statement a triangle is a figure with exactly three sides as indicated our topic here is a triangle and the conclusion that we have is that it has exactly three sides hence this is the focus and this is our conclusion okay so sometimes it's important to take note that it depends upon the original statement on how our conditional statement will be. That may sound confusing at first, but it's an important detail because conditional statements can be put into different forms. So we start with a triangle to figure with exactly three sides. Then we can say that if a figure is a triangle, then it has exactly three sides. We know that this is always true because a triangle has exactly three sides that's an important thing to take note of okay so conditional statements also have different forms as i have mentioned earlier what we call as the inverse the inverse now is taking the notation of not p then not q meaning to say not p then not q implies that wow i'm using the word implies while it's being used in the lesson we're basically negating the entire statement so what you're seeing here is our original conditional statement the one that i've put a star beside it so if a figure is a triangle then it has exactly three sides so when you're doing the inverse it is important that you still take note of correct grammar as much as possible know where to put the not it doesn't mean that inverse means that you're going to use not all the time there are different usage of negation in terms of sentences so we might have an example later for that so if a figure is a triangle then it has exactly three sides first you change something with your hypothesis as you can notice that there's the word not here it's not a triangle and then on the conclusion we have it has exactly three sides we use the word it doesn't have exactly three sides so Again, the term inverse implies that we're negating the entire thing, okay? The entire thing, not just the hypothesis, not just the conclusion, but the entire statement itself. So that's the inverse, okay? And now, speaking of another firm, form, I did not say firm, I said form. I'm so sorry for that. The next one is what we call as the converse. The converse is not a pair of shoes, it's more about switching it up. So basically, from our original conditional statement, the converse implies that we will have the conclusion first followed by the hypothesis. So this might sound confusing with the inverse. That's why it's important to take note that inverse implies negation while converse implies switching it up. So we start now with our conclusion followed by our hypothesis now some students might ask sir why do we still have the word figure in front even though it's now a conclusion so that we will be able to make the sentence grammatically correct because you say if it has exactly three sides then the figure is a triangle it's much more better when you write or construct the sentence where you put the figure still up front it doesn't mean that you're not following instructions please take note though what we're implying here or talking about here specifically is not the entire hypothesis and conclusion sometimes you can add words sometimes you can lessen some words in your in your given sentence when you're transforming them what matters is that the thought of the hypothesis and the conclusion will not change when you switch it up into different versions of it i hope that makes sense okay so by converse you put the conclusion first followed by the hypothesis so instead of if hypothesis then conclusion it's now if conclusion then hypothesis now the next one that is going to be included here or the last one that we're going to pay attention to in terms of different kinds of 
conditional statements or different forms of it is the contrapositive. If you look at here, it says that if not Q, then not P. Basically, the contrapositive can be interpreted in two different ways. Um, you can say that the it's the inverse of the converse because if you negate the entire converse, it results the contrapositive. Or if you converse the inverse, it's still contrapositive. So it's a bit tricky when you hear that, but it's actually true. So it's good also for you to practice like, oh, what is the inverse of the inverse? That kind of thing. When you have the inverse of the inverse, that negates the negation, so it becomes positive again. So it goes back to the original conditional statement. And I would like to reiterate, the contrapositive is received by having either the inverse of the converse or the converse of the inverse. So now, if you look at that, basically, that is it. You don't have to make it complicated anymore. So earlier, the converse says if a figure has exactly three sides, then it is a triangle. So by getting the inverse of the converse, you get the contrapositive, which is if a figure doesn't have exactly three sides, then it isn't a triangle. So that's how it works. Again, you can interpret contrapositive into two different ways. That's for you to understand. So in this case, you can have this another example where you say, if two segments have the same length, then they are congruent. That's the original conditional statement. So if P then q the next if two segments doesn't have the same length so if not p i'm sorry why did i use blue if not p then not q so as you can notice here from having the og we negate the entire thing and then for the converse we switch it up. So let's say if Q, then P. And then lastly, if you put it in contrapositive, we can say we have if not Q, then not P. Uh, I had a mistake here. Please don't hate me. Uh, Wait, am I correct? If two segments are then they don't have... Oh, yeah, I'm correct. But I thought I had a grammatical, grammatical error here, but yeah. They they don't have the same thing. If two segments don't have... Yeah, yeah, this one, yeah. I think it should be don't, right? Should it be don't? Don't you? Which, yeah, yeah. It's a, I think it should be don't. Uh, I'm not an English major, guys. So don't hate me, but yeah. So this is an example also of having a conditional statement, but it's an inverse converse and then contrapositive so now other than conditional statements there's this thing that we call biconditional biconditional is not necessarily complicated by implication takes place when p is equivalent to q now for those who are wondering when does this take place please take a good look at our two examples here if a figure has exactly three sides, then it is a triangle. And then we have, if the figure is a triangle, then it has exact, exactly three sides. This takes place when the OG or the original conditional statement is true. And, take note of this, and the converse of the OG conditional statement is also true. So if they are both true, when you combine them, you can have a situation where we have what we call as a biconditional statement. Again, this takes place when your original conditional and the converse conditional are both true. So we can have a by implication. So uh, as you can see, instead of using if then, we now use if and only if in the middle of a sentence. This one is also something that is commonly used in writing, poetry and songs because you know it has a condition both should be true this time around earlier there's like a beginning and then an ending so there's uncertainty in there at times but when we say by implication both should be true okay so that's the thing right here so you may use this guide in order for you to remember how to put conditional statements in different forms it's an important detail to understand
So again, conditional statement, if hypothesis, then conclusion. Inverse, if not hypothesis, then not conclusion. Then con converse, if conclusion, then hypothesis. And then last one, contrapositive, if not conclusion, then not hypothesis. So that's all you need to remember in line with conditional statements. So if you want to test out here, when you're being asked about the truth value of a certain statement, all you have to do is to check whether said statement is always true, sometimes true, or never true. Once you move around in other levels, you will have different kinds of labeling in indicating when a statement is a false statement or a true statement. But for the time being, uh, this is all we have for the basics of conditional statements. Okay, so let's have two examples at least. So for example, we have here the conditional statement. If you are a logical person, then you are good in math. To put that into the converse, you can see the guide uh, on the screen also. So we have to put the conclusion first followed by the hypothesis. So we can say that if you are good in math, then you are a logical person. Um, I'm a slow writer, so it's better if you practice this and somewhat, you know, recite this on your own so that you can remember how it works. Next, we have the inverse. So the inverse of that is the negation of the conditional statement. So we can say, if you are not a logical person, then you are not good in math. Oh, I just realized I had another, you know, error in the typing. There's no such thing as in good math, you know. Maybe in good grace as good math. But what I'm trying to say here is that then you are good in math. Apologies for that. Anyway, let's go with the contrapositive. So negate the converse. So if you are not good in math then you are not a logical person so that's how it works so you can notice all these things are trivial things you know you cannot identify if it's actually true or sometimes true but then if you put it to study such thing could be sometimes true only because, you know, not because you're good in math, you're already logical. Some people are dummies, you know. I'm good in math sometimes, but I'm a dummy. I'm not logical sometimes. So, you know, it's not always true. Whether you put it into the converse, inverse, or contrapositive. But now, let's go somewhat mathematical to prove that somehow, maybe, or sometimes, we are logical people. This one right here is about... Parallel lines. So if two lines are parallel, then they do not meet. This is something that I want to really dive into because here you can actually change certain terms or words. So the do not meet can be changed into the term intersect or do not intersect. Okay, so you can use that. Uh, it's your choice though. But if you want to stick with that, it's your choice too. As much as possible, again, we stick with the if two lines. Let's not put it uh, in the conclusion because if, uh, if you say, if they do not meet, then the two lines are parallel. It doesn't make sense. So as much as possible, we keep the if two lines up front. Speaking of, so let's say the converse is, if two lines, you can say do not meet or do not intersect. Again, that's your choice. If two lines do not meet, then they are parallel. Again, you may change the term there if you want to, as long as the idea is there or the same, there's no problem with that. So for inverse, you could say if two lines are not parallel, or you can say if two lines intersect, because that's the opposite or inverse of parallel, then... They... This is the point. Then they meet. It sounds wrong. So, you can, uh, you can say then they intersect. Oh, yeah. Anyway, let's stick with the consistency. It's important to be consistent here, you know, even in life. Anyway, so you can also say if two lines meet, then 
they are not parallel. I want to point out something here since this is our last example. As you can notice, we said do not meet and it became meet in terms of the contrapositive. Because when you negate the terms do not, you will not say not do not. You know, it sounds wrong. So you should correct it. So not, you can say if two lines do meet, you know, it's still okay. But as much as possible, uh, you know, we try to lessen the hassle with a lot of words or terminologies. So that's what I'm trying to say. The reason why I underlined or highlighted these two things so that you can notice what happens when you negate a negative uh, or a, yeah, a negative term. Like do not. When you negate that, it became or it be, it's basically canceled out. Now I'm stuttering, you know. So that's the point here. So you can take note of that so you can help yourself out. Okay? So that's conditional statements for you. Well, that ends our video about conditional statements. If you guys learned something from this video, then please click like, share, and subscribe, even though it won't matter in the... F you know, nothing matters. I'm just kidding. <laughs> everything matters but for this one it don't matter if you like share subscribe what matters is that you learn something and speaking of learning something always remember what's up that is respect and in case you don't see the great one remember good morning good afternoon good evening and good night everybody peace out bye bye